Welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is, uh, I am the facilitator of this uh, session. Um, and I wanna welcome you from the Center of Excellence for Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Consultation and this year's conference, Equity from the Start. My name is Sherry Heller and I will serve as the session facilitator. And I am joined by Baraya, who will serve as our technology host. This session is being recorded. Transcription is available through the Zoom platform. And should you have any questions, feel free to relay those in the chat. Our presenters have, will have time at the end of their session to answer any questions about, um, about the, um, their presentation. So we will hold um, space until the end, but if you have technology issues or questions around that, feel free to insert those in the chat. Um, we want to let you know before we begin that the views, policies, and opinions expressed in this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect those of SAMHSA or HHS. That being said, I'm going to pass it on to our presenters, um, and I will uh, see you at the end of the session. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sherry, and uh, thank you all for being here today. I am honored and privileged to uh, spend this time with you along with my colleague, Kim. And we are going to dive into the topic um, of diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, as it is truly at the heart of the consultative stance. And uh, we welcome your reflection today and uh, we will go ahead and get started. As soon as I can uh, move my slides, oops, here we go. All right, so um, as part of uh, what we wanna do here is we are going to take a look at uh, the 10 components of the consultative stance, uh, as well as the diversity informed tenants and see how they um, truly blend together. And uh, it's not uh, a checkbox of one or the other, but uh, a way of being. And so we will be talking about that today. So you can dive into those very specific learning objectives uh, when you see the slides on your own. So I am Sandy Abzeradal. I have the honor and privilege uh, of directing Start Well, an infant early childhood mental health consultation program um, here in sunny Southern California. And we um, have six full-time consultants with us and uh, one of which is here and I will let Kim introduce herself as well. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, like Sandy said, my name is Kim Verse Lewis. Uh, I am a infant and early childhood mental health consultant for Start Well, um, and I have been for a little bit over three years. Um, I love the work that that we get to do, and I'm so excited to be here and uh, getting to talk a little bit more about it today. Great, thank you. And unfortunately, Raisa, she is uh, our senior uh, consultant. Uh, she had a family emergency and had to travel out of the country, so she is not um, able to be with us today. Okay, so I have to first uh, start by saying, uh, giving a huge shout out to Khadija Johnston, and uh, I listened to her um, along with her colleagues today, her plenary session and uh, Khadija is um, my mentor and uh, technical assistance. Thank you, um, Neil et al. In, um, at Georgetown for providing uh, us with technical assistance so that we can really improve our work. And uh, she, uh, the book that she wrote along with Charles Brenneman, uh, really resonated with myself and um, and and our team on the consultative stance, and so I want to give a big shout out to her. She did um, look at the slides and uh, approve the slides, so I um, I want you all to know that this was very much is very much about her work and our interpretation of. Uh, the work that her and her colleagues have put into this. So um, a very, very, very special thank you to Khadija. So how this started was uh, our team has been really working on uh, 
-hmm. Implementing, well, first of all, understanding, implementing, uh, and having conversations, ongoing conversations about how um, diversity, equity, and inclusion impact our work. And it, it sounds so trivial to say it in a sentence like that when it is so complex and uh, such a part of, of who we are and how we are. Uh, we, were, we were quite honestly really struggling with how to interpret um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and, and all of the kind of noise that comes in with it. And, and how do we separate that out into what we need to do for uh, the children and families that we're working with? And, and the providers that we're working with. And so uh, through it, at another um, technical assistance through Georgetown, we were, we were privileged to be able to work through all of the aspects of consultation. And when we got to the module on diversity, equity, inclusion, and we had a very well-designed, um, um, I'm gonna say checklist, but it was it was so much more than a checklist of of what we need to be considering when we're looking at how we are uh, addressing um, the systemic issues that uh, we all are facing. Uh, we spent a long time as a team really talking about that, and uh, when we finally also read Khadijah's book and 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 um, Charles Brenneman's book, um, The Consultative Stance, uh, and talked about the consultative stance, we realized that those, the diversity informed te tenants from the Irving Harris Foundation and the consultative stance are really um, so um, braided and embedded and integrated. It is not something that needs to be separated out it's really a, a way of thinking and a way of being that really tie into each other. So um, using that parallel process that is so um, central in the um, consultative stance, we are looking at those in diversity informed tenants to help us understand how those interactions and relationships um, are really the foundation for all the culturally responsive supports that we are providing the adults who are then through that parallel process providing to the children and families in their care. So that's how this came about. And um, I'm sure like many of you um, have, have struggled with really um, living um, and and doing what we need to do to um, interrupt those systemic the systemic racism the the systemic issues that we face in early care and education um, that affect uh, very young children and so this is how we are disrupting that process. So I'm going to hand it over to Kim to talk about um, some of the components of the consultative stance. Thank you. And Sandy, I loved your description of the process because it really has been such a process for us. And, the, and that's one of the beautiful things about the work that we get to do is the fact that we are continually processing the information and continually growing and developing um, and growing in the stance. And I think that's such a, a wonderful, beautiful thing. Um, about the work um, as as a consultant. Um, and we the first thing we wanted to start with was the centrality of relationships, because what we know is that relationships are the core of, of what we do. Um, our relationships directly shape the young children's growth and development um, that we get to work with. Um, and, and it directly shapes it and it indirectly shapes it at times. Um, but it absolutely impacts um, the children and the families that we get to work with. All of our relationship dyads, um, they impact the trajectory of the children. 
you know, those dyads may be our teacher child, teacher, 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 parent, uh, parent, child, you know, consultant, consultee, um, all the different dyads that we get to work within. It really absolutely impacts uh, the trajectory of our of the children. Uh, and those relationships are just central. Um, it really is an awareness uh, there. There's an awareness that is just crucial to understanding, um, you know, what we all bring to the relationships. Each one of us brings different dynamics, um, different, you know, backgrounds, different experiences um, into these relationships. And so it's just so important that we're aware um, of, of what it is that we bring, uh, because it does impact uh, the children that we work with. Those relationships are absolutely central to everything uh, that we are doing. And as we look at the, the consultative stance um, and kind of go into um, those those nine beautiful um, tenants, you know, those those aspects are absolutely um, based on those those relationships. Those, it all comes back to our relationships. Um, that consultative stance is the way that we are, the way that that we um, interact in uh in in our daily you know work life in our in our um, consultation uh, you know we always like to say you know it's it's our it's not something that we do it's something that we are it's it's you know our our way of being uh, you know the consultant is we we drum and demonstrate the interest the empathy the respect uh, you know the understanding all of it is linked uh, into what we do. And so we want to make sure that we are drawing uh, attention to that and recognizing, um, you know, that that power of relationship between the consultant and the consultee really does transform all the other relationships um, that, that are within that system. Um, the caregivers accept and they use our consultant knowledge uh, in direct proportion to the levels of, of trust and respect uh, that are between, uh, you know, uh, us as we build that relationship. Um, now we can go ahead and go on to the next slides where we're um, talking about the the nine aspects um, of that consultative stance. Now we're we're starting with the understanding that we we believe that most of us um, probably have some sense, um, you know, whether it's a little bit or a lot, um, or we're an expert. <laughs> uh, you know, we we definitely have some background uh, within the stance, but we just thought we'd go over it. Uh, before we go into the diversity tenants so that we all kind of are starting with the same foundation. So like I said before, you know, it really is that way of being. It's it's kind of how we um, interact and, and how we move within the space, um, you know, of the, the life of a consultant. Um, so we can go ahead and move on to the part one of our consultant stances. Uh, we start off with the consultative stance with, with the mutuality of endeavor that the the consultee contributes and participates in the process. It's a team it's a team effort. We are all working towards the same goals, collaborating um, and we absolutely want to have everybody on the same page working together. Uh, we want to avoid the position of the expert. Um, this is something that we know um, is is such an important part because all of us you know are, are experts on, on at some level, whether you're an expert on that child, whether you're an expert on your program, uh, you know, whether you are have a behavioral information or background, or maybe you're an expert on community services, everybody has something that they're bringing to the table. And so we want to make sure that we're avoiding that that um, position of the expert. We want to wonder. We want to we want to be able to ask questions and discuss. We want to be able to really um, instead of knowing all the answers, we want to we want to wonder. We want to ask the questions. We want to talk to the, our consultees um, and and process. We don't we don't want to just give the answers or, or what we think is the answer. Uh, we want to slow down and we want to really consider um, the possibilities. Uh, we want to understand each other's experiences because each one of us is bringing something to that table. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we are giving everybody a place to be able to be heard and valued. Uh, we wanna consider all levels of, of influence, um, our different personal histories, our different um, maybe conflicts or influences or uh, whatever it, it may be. Uh, we all have a different level of, of influence in the work. 
And so we all want to make sure that we're we're all coming to the table. Um, and and as consultants, we want to make sure that we really do have that mutuality um, togetherness. Um, the next one, and I, I believe it's number five, uh, if, if we're looking at our numbers, uh, is hearing and representing all voices. We definitely want to make sure that everyone is heard. Um, and especially that child and that family, uh, because that's that's really what we're working to support. We want to make sure that we're increasing at the adults' capacities to be able to um, to to understand that that they are a part of this. They they are a part of of the solution. They're a part of that um, the the growth and success that that ultimately we're we're all looking towards. Um, and of course, coming back to that centrality of relationships, you know, mental health is promoted by the interactions that we have. And so we absolutely want to keep those relationships central in all of our work together. Uh, we want to focus on our parallel processes, um, understanding that, you know, the relationship that we have between the caregiver and the consultant, uh, and it's, it, it is a quality that is, that we want to um, build and that we want to work within, you know, it may be the way that I work with a director is going to completely, it is, absolutely going to impact the way that that director works with maybe their teachers. And then it's going to impact the way that teacher works with the parent or works with the child. All of our processes, uh, we, we want there to be those parallel processes. We want to make sure that we're working in a way that it's going to be sustainable and that it's going to be consistent. It's going to be ongoing. Um, and one of the great things that we get to do is really um, hold that spot of patience. We get to hold that space for relationships to to develop and grow. Uh, we definitely want to um, hear our our, our consultees' stories. We want them to be able to share. We want them to be able to um, you know tell their story, where they came from. Um, I I can't even name the amount of times, you know, cons consultation has led into um, a person's backstory, maybe their own, the way they were parented, or the way that, that they parented their children. Um, you know, it, it, all of, uh, you know, our stories impact, you know, the way that we function as human beings. And so part of, you know, our spot as a consultant is to get to, to hold that space for them, and to be patient. Um, and we always say um, at start, well, we always tell you know each other we'd say you know trust the process uh that's probably the, the thing that we say the most to each other uh you know when we come together and talk about you know how we're growing and what we're doing and then the work that we're doing every day you know sometimes there are those moments where it's like oh i wish this would happen faster or we're not i'm not seeing the change or the investment uh, and the thing that we always say to each other is, is trust the process you know and that's how we are holding that patience and really living it out. Um, and that comes right into our ninth um, piece of the consultative stance, which is that we get to hold the hope. Uh, we get to hold the hope for providers. We get to hold the hope for parents. We get to hold the hope for kiddos, um, you know, because we get to, to see um, an interesting perspective. Sometimes it's from the outside. Sometimes it's coming in and learning new uh, things about a program or about a family uh, or about a, a child, but we really get to hold the hope in the situation and share that hope and um, really be uh, that that voice. Because sometimes when you're stuck in it, it's really hard, uh, you know, to to constantly see like the possibilities. Uh, but we get to be that voice, uh, you know, for our consultees and the people that we work with, uh, and it really is a, a beautiful uh, piece of the work that we get to do. Uh, now, we've kind of done a little brief overview of, of the consultative stance. We would love to know or, or hear your voice a little bit on that. Uh, does anyone have any feedback on how you or your staff utilize the consultative stance uh, in your work? Feel free to pop it in the chat or uh, raise your hand and we'll, we'll unmute you. Uh, but we would love to hear, hear your feedback. How do, how do you, um, you know, live out that consultative stance in your work? If we're not sure or still processing, that's okay. It's absolutely okay. Maybe the second question, how can you utilize the consultative stance 
to maybe improve relationship building in the work that you're doing? Um, is there, is, are, are we resonating? Do we, do we feel like this is just kind of a review? Um, is there new stuff? I think I'm, I'm just going to jump in and piggyback on, <laughs> on what um, Khadijah and her team talked about today, which was um, really the consultative stance is really how we are moving through life, right? How we are um, approaching everything in life, because everything in life is about the relationships. And, and so um, just who we are and, and how we come to the work that we do, the relationships that we have, um, really, if you go back to those elements of that consultative stance, um, it, it really works for all parts of life, not just in the work that we're doing, um, in our, in our, um, in our day work, but in our, it's really about life work. And I, and I remember listening to Khadija this morning saying how, you know, it's, it's not that she set out to do, to create these, um, all parts of this consultative stance, but it just, it's how kind of life evolved and, um, and how effective it is. And thank goodness there's all of this research on the effectiveness of the consultative stance. Um, so, Anybody else? No? Okay, I'm checking out the, the chat. All right. Well, we'll and, go. Oh, go ahead, Kim. I was just going to say, I'm going to go ahead and drop the, the consultative stance uh, into the chat also, just so uh, everybody has, you know, a copy or, uh, you know, something to reflect back on. Perfect. And then we'll move into the diversity informed tenants, uh, or the tenants as they're they're called. And and I am I'm remiss uh, from I should have said this at the very beginning, but um, I do realize that I come um, as a white female um, that has lived in um, the west uh, westernized uh, culture and. Um, Fortunately for my, for me, I have two um, young adult sons who have really led me through um, uh, a process where I am, I am living this consultative stance, or I try to live in this consultative stance and and um, hold hope and wonder instead of no and. Um, all of those amazing things and my my two children have helped me um through this process um so i i do want to um say i i i am very much aware of what i'm bringing to this and um there's so much more that i need to learn and i will continue to do to do so um, which is why i wanted to present on this because uh it's really grappling with um, big, big, big things in life. And um, I think we're better humans if we can grapple with uh, with some of this. So uh, the, those of you who are not as um, informed of the diversity informed tenants, <laughs> didn't mean to use that pun there. Um, uh, we will also drop, drop that in the chat, uh, but it was developed, um, obviously you can see in 2018, uh, to help those of us who work in this space with infants, children, and um, families. And it is a way to um, uh, strengthen the capacity of those working in these systems um, to better serve children and, the, and their young children and their families. And um, it also helps us to um, continue to work towards building a more diverse, inclusive, and equitable workforce um, that really looks at the, 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 the family as the center of the work. So where the diverse or where the consultative stance is looking at the relationships as the, the center of the work, it's look 
for us, it's looking in this um, aspect, it's looking at that family as the center of the work and that family are the experts of their family. And uh, so we are, are looking at the overlap, the parallel, the grading of these two frameworks um, to do our work, to do our work better. So the first part is that self-awareness leads to better service for families. And I think um, if, if we can all come from a place of um, what we bring to our work with these fam families or with these providers of uh, young children, um, if we can understand what we bring and how that impacts the, all of those dyads, those relationships. I think that's the first step in really helping to understand systems of oppression. Um, and I say first step because I don't know that unless we have lived experience, um, we really understand these these. Uh, on, on, a, on a large scale, these large systems of oppression. But if we are co constantly reflecting on what we are bringing, what our background, what our history, what our experiences, what our upbringing, what our cultures are, what we're bringing to those relationships and how that impacts the conversations and the interactions, um, I think that's the first step uh, towards really understanding um, systems of oppression. Uh, the next tenant is championing children's rights globally. And if we look at the um, consultative stance, understanding all levels of influence and that we, every, every person has a subjective experience, their own experience that they bring if we can look at how we're influencing and being aware of our subjective uh, experience, then we truly can champion children's rights because it's not about their behavior or it's not about their culture. It's not about what happened um, to them. It's, it's about understanding all of those influences that, um, maybe they're part of in, in the center of some oppression and we can get them out. We can help get them out of that through our work um, as consultants. Uh, working to acknowledge privilege and combat discrimination. In the consultative stance, we are using that parallel process. And so much of what we do is that reflection. And so if we can um, help those that were our consultees reflect on what they bring to these relationships using that parallel process, using the, the wondering and not knowing, using the position, of, not, not, use, not coming from the position of an expert um, and help our consultees acknowledge their privilege, acknowledge their biases, acknowledge uh, implicit or explicit biases, if we can get them to a place where they can acknowledge us and reflect and reflect on that, um, then we can, again, another step towards uh, combating racism, classism, sexism, all of those uh, discriminatory um, spaces that, that are happening in, in the work that we do. Um, I love, we hear and represent all voices, right? Consultants, that's part of what we do is, is part of the consultative stance is we are not coming from a place of this is what needs to happen, but it's okay. What has happened so far with you, with the environment, with the relationships, what, and how can we help you move forward? Uh, also, um, recognizing non-dominant bodies of knowledge. And, and again, I go back to my, my two sons who have helped me realize that, you know, um, I, I came from this dominant um, body of knowledge. I come from this dominant body of knowledge. And 
Um, I have to be able to uh, identify it first <laughs> and then do something about it. And through the consultative stance, we, by avoiding that position of an ex uh, as the expert, then we actually will legitimize the expertise of, of the others that are there. And this takes constant reflection and constant acknowledgement of, of our own um, of our own backgrounds. Um, I love the the um, emphasis on learning and understanding rather than knowing and and that just saying, I wonder um, helps everyone kind of, um, get out of that position um, and the, the the positions of power and and um, and and knowledge. Honoring diverse family structures, I think, um, uh, you know, families um, have always looked very different in in all the different um, parts of the world. And, you know, when we're, when we come from a dominant body of knowledge, um, then we have our own preconceived ideas of what a family is. And so helping um, those that are working with young children understand that a family is whomever that group of people decide is their family. They may not even be related, but they may have a very prominent um, position in that family unit as uh, someone that is supporting that family. And I think um, we have to understand that it doesn't always look like what what we what our background of what a family looks like, and um, helping our consultees see that when there's um, oftentimes a lot of bias towards um, families and, and how they operate and um, trying to um, um, get through that for them to see that even though it doesn't operate how you think it may, it should operate, doesn't mean it's wrong and doesn't mean that um, there isn't the love and the support that's needed, it just might look differently. Um, I, the next piece of the tenets is understanding that language can hurt or heal, and and words are powerful, um, and they how we communicate with those that we're working with, um, and that relationship is will make or break um, the impact on the children that are being served. And so we want to understand that the impact um, of the words that we use um, can positively or negatively influence um, the relationships that we have and the change that occurs, which ultimately impacts um, the young children and, and their families. Supporting families in their preferred language, and, and it's been talked about several times throughout this conference about um, the importance of, of providing consultation in um, a family's primary language or a provider's primary language. And um, sometimes that isn't uh, always possible depending on, on where we are, but we, we know that um, if families are supported in their primary language, um, change uh, is more likely to occur. And um, we want to continue to strive towards the diversity of our workforce, because as you know, they lots of them look like I do. And lots of us look like I do. And um, that does not represent um, the families that we're serving um, necessarily here, especially here in, in, in California. And then allocating resources to systems change. So um, the consultative stance it is, to me, I look at it as a resource uh, because if each one of us that is out there doing this work utilizes the consultative stance, um, we, are, we ha have the ability to impact millions of people through their own ongoing reflection of 
their bias, their barriers, and all of that will help disrupt the um, the issues of racism and um, inequity. And I see our work as consultants as a resource, not not a financial resource, um, but as a human resource. And I think if we can each embody this consultative stance and these tenants, which are all combined together, as you can see now, um, I think we we can dismantle uh, what's happening. Um, we just need uh, more of us out there in the world to do this work. That's what I think anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, and we'll see if anybody is, is a taker now um, on um, talking about uh, how you or your staff utilizes the diversity informed tenants um, or how do you use the diversity informed tenants to improve the consultee con consultant relationship um, or anything that's related. And we're consultants, so we're okay with with uh, the quietness and the space. <laughs> I think there's some um, some in the chat as well. Um, oh yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of overlap. I thought about that, um, as I was preparing for, for this, there's a lot of overlap in the, um, the sessions and it just, it shows how powerful these, um, um, ideologies are. And, uh, I, I truly believe that, um, through this work, and if we embody this work in everything that we do, um, we can change the systems out there. Okay, so I have, um, <laughs> I was at a, an infant, uh, early childhood mental health conference in San Diego um, a couple months ago. And there was another model that was very much, very heady, very, very complex. And uh, they did a visual like this. And so if you're a visual person, this hopefully will help, um, is really um, seeing this in a, in a visual way. So you can see that relationships are at the center of it. And then all um, the parts of the consultative stance. Uh, and then on the outside are the tenants. And although there's not a one-to-one -one correlation, because I, I really tried to, to do one-to-one -one correlation, it doesn't work that way because it, it is how we are. It is our being, right? And so... Um, but hopefully this can help um, help you keep this in, in the forefront of your mind. Um, maybe you can, you know, print this off and put it at your desk or um, someplace where you can really see this uh, without all of the, the words because it's, it is so complex. So hopefully this is helpful for, for some of you. Absolutely. I, I definitely appreciate the visual. I think it just brings it all together for me. <laughs> but it's such a wonderful thing for us to be able to reflect. And I and I, I hope that's, you know, kind of what what we're doing, you know, as we listen. And I mean, it's what I'm doing, <laughs> even, you know, even even being aware of the, the content and, and having been in, you know, some of those conversations that that Sandy described, um, you know, we we as consultants at Startwell have really um, we we've been processing and kind of marinating. And I feel like we we're still, it, it's, it's a process, you know, like it, it's part of, um, you know, like you said, becoming who, who we, we are and then how we are. Um, and so, uh, I hope that that everybody is, is also kind of having that experience as well. 
of just being able to kind of sit and reflect um, and and uh, soak in it a little bit. Um, as we kind of close up today, we wanted to just draw a little bit of a summary. Um, the, the consultative stance allows us to practice our way of being in our interactions with our consultees, being aware of our own sense of self um, and how that impacts each relationship uh, and helps us to strive for the highest level of diversity and inclusion and equity in our work um, with those who directly, um, our work directly impacts, which is the children and the families. Um, we uh, hope that you've you know, enjoyed getting to think through uh, these these tenants and the stance, um, and we would love you know we were, we have a good you know well almost ten minutes um, to be able to talk. So we would love for you to share your thoughts. Um, maybe there's areas that uh, you want to include or think about these things in your work. Uh, maybe even areas that might change the way that you work or how you work. Um, but we would love to be able to kind of open it up to to questions, to thoughts, um, maybe reflection, um, any of those wonderful um, things. So we'll we'll just kind of we're gonna open it up and and please feel free to you know raise your hand, unmute yourself, pop in the chat. Um, we would love to to chat about it. And I see um, Ty Johnson. Um, if you would like to um, unmute, uh, we for sure, or I can just read. She, she wrote, I use the diversity informed tenants to support those I supervise to reflect on their privilege and to work forward to identify where harm has been or could be done if their own awareness to their approaches to support others is not intentional and culturally humble. Yes, amen to that, right? If, if, if we haven't addressed our own um, privilege and power uh, and power dynamics, um, we can um, subconsciously, unconsciously um, contribute to racism and, and some of those systemic issues um, if we haven't addressed that ourselves. Oh, yay. She, um, Sherry, Sherry likes the visual <laughs> of how it works together. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Got a few of those. Yeah. And I, and I, I'm going to go back to, um, I think Khadijah is on here. Um, I can't see everybody, but I think she is. And I just want to, um, um, big love and, and shout out to you, Khadijah, for, um, for being as brilliant as you were, even if you didn't know how brilliant you were at the time. Um, but I just, this is, something that I think really can change um, both of these models can I think change change the world. And um, I'm so privileged and honored to A, have you as my um, technical assistance, but um, also uh, call you a friend in this work that we do. So I um, wanted to, to um, just share my love for you, Khadija. And I hope you're feeling better. You look fabulous, by the way. <laughs> Anybody, questions, comments, thoughts? Well, we would um, definitely like to thank you for spending some time with us. Um, You'll have a gift of a few minutes uh, of time if um, you can uh, take care of yourself. And uh, we appreciate uh, you spending this, this short amount of time with us. And um, I will also put in, my, in the chat uh, my contact information. I realize I don't have that on there. And uh, feel free to reach out for, for any of it. And Sherry, did you wanna say something? I want to just thank everybody for being here. This really, I think this this presentation just everybody's kind of thinking and mulling over it. It was a nice reflective space, and you're 
slides were so relaxing. <laughs> um, I enjoyed I enjoyed just looking at them and thinking. But I appreciate your time, and I hope to see everybody at the um, conference tomorrow. We have another full day. Right. Oh, and you have a comment from Khadija. She says oh. depicting the consultative stance and the diversity um, um, the diversity tenets as intertwined and bidirectional is beautiful. We can do the, the 3D version as a spiral. Um, she can't come off mute, but she's also sending love, gratitude, and appreciation for your mutual endeavor. Oh. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, have a good afternoon or evening, everyone.